Welcome back to Tight Down TV, the Punk Rock Opinion Show with me, Jeff. I'm Danny. And today we're doing top five bands that appeal to both punks and metalheads. It might sound like there's a lot, but when you think about it, there isn't really that many. It was harder than I thought originally well, well, when well, the idea came up. Yeah. Well, we're not taking into consideration crossover here. No. So this is a list separate from what you would consider crossover bands, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Because you could just fill it up with crossover bands, couldn't yeah, you? Yeah, definitely, but we've done a crossover video as well. Yeah, so I'm excited to do this video because it gives us a chance to talk about some bands which wouldn't usually get on our yeah, channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, when you think about it, <clears throat> that both punks and metal metalheads universally seem to have respect for equally a band. There isn't that many. Not many consider the pool of bands in the world. No, very you know true, I mean? very true, yeah, yeah. When you step out of like crossover and, and, and some of a... Uh, genres that maybe yeah. you know, I think thrash like, bands definitely, yeah. but yeah, it's harder once yeah. you look at the other. Yeah, grindcore bands, you yeah. know that type of stuff. It's inevitable. Maybe one or two of those bands have jumped on a list of ours, but we've definitely not ventured into crossover territory. No, on purpose. No, 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 yeah, no, yeah. for sure. Yeah, not yeah. doing any crossover thrash for sure. Yeah, but you know, like I said, there doesn't seem to be that many of bands where both punks and metalheads seem to love equally. You yeah. know what I mean? There's not, not that many, really. But from years of growing up with people who are involved in both scenes, I've got, I can't, I do have kind of like a separate group of mates who are just it's strictly metalers. Yeah. And they do seem to like some bands that punk people seem to like as well. Yeah. And it seems to be a cut. You know, you hear the same names come up, you see the same bat patches on battle jackets yeah. of both groups of. Yeah, definitely. Both, both crowds. Yeah, definitely. So think, we've yeah. we've had to pull out five each that we that are still our favourites. Yeah, that we oh, still love. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to be fair, as you know, someone who primarily is probably into punk and hardcore, much like yourself, mm. I do love a lot of metal as well. Certain mm. you know subgenres. Yeah. Which maybe you could have argued some of that could have tried to shoehorn a few like you know sludgy doom bands in that are like yeah. or whatever. But you know, generally yeah. speaking, I, yeah, like you say, I think most most. Punks have probably got a few metal bands that they, they appreciate quite yeah. a bit. Yeah. But if I speak to my punk mates, who are, who are just full-on punk mates, mm -hmm. then they, they tend to, to not like, when we're talking about bands, they tend to not like the fact, they tend to not like the likes of Biohazard and that 90s metal stuff. You know, it's almost something I can guarantee when I'm talking to well, they're not going to like that. They're not going to like Downset. They're not going to like, you know... They're not going to like 25 to like. Are you They're not including gonna... me in this group? No, that's no, I'm not, I'm not including you, actually. Because <laughs> some of them bands I'm not a no, fan of. Yeah, yeah, I know you're not, but I'm not actually including you because I know what band, I know you've, you're yeah. pretty open-minded for the most part. Yeah, yeah. So, come on then, get us underway. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to start, and I'm going to start with probably the obvious one. As soon as you think about it, I've got Motorhead. Yeah, and Motorhead was the band that we both knew as soon as we thought of this yeah. list. Everyone loves Motorhead. Everyone, everyone respects punk's Motorhead. Metalheads. Now, yeah. so they formed in '75, just before punk. Now, I heard Lemmy say that the only reason, really, that they weren't necessarily always considered a punk band is because they had long hair. Well, yeah, I remember seeing. He famously said that he felt like he had more in common with yeah. the punks than the metal. I think he do. I think you listen yeah. to Motorhead, and it's it's rock and roll, and it's yeah. fast rock and roll. Yeah. Now, early punk is definitely rooted in a lot of that same fast rock yeah, and roll, yeah. isn't it? And yeah. You know, so that I mean to speak for why I think I think that kind of fast it's rock and rolly, but it you know it's it's fast enough that like metalheads and thrash kids probably yeah. are into it. They just it's fucking great, weren't they? Do you know what I mean? Especially that classic era of um, you know, I think he was just such the real deal as well yeah. that he couldn't help but be inspired. Roll, yeah, he? yeah, just rock and roll, and he's got his punk credentials. I mean, he played bass live with the Damned. Yeah. He was big friends with them, obviously, because they released on Stiff Records at around the same time, and he, he hung out with a lot of the punks as well as you know. I think he, like you said, he always aligned himself. He always aligned them, um, maybe a little bit more in the in the punk than the the, the metal camp, yeah, yeah, so to speak. But uh, yeah, I mean, what more can you say anyway? It's motorhead, isn't it? Yeah, there's not. Like I say, when you think about <laughs> Lemmy, I mean, he's universally respected. No yeah. one, you know what I mean? Yeah. And and he just epitomised what rock and roll is. And let's be honest, it's all rock and roll, isn't it? Yeah, if, it's real, if, if it's real, if it's real, if it's essence. fucking real metal and it's real punk, it's fucking rock and it's roll. Boiled down to it's yeah, the spirit of rock and yeah, roll. Yeah, because for me, the real bands speak about you. Do you know what I mean? They're yeah. talking about you, you know, and and Lemmy, you know, he, he's representing you when he talks. It, it what's it mean to be young and 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 
what, 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 young kind of ca- the chaos you face in your life, yeah, you know, yeah. unpredictability, mm-hmm. all that kind of thing. I always said, you know, when you think about the great rock and roll songs that got into the charts, maybe not going back to the fifties and stuff, but later on. They were they they spoke to youth culture in such of a big way. Like you yeah, look at yeah, something yeah, like yeah. Ace of Spades, yeah. I mean, look, the lyrics and that—it's all about being young and reckless. You know, gambling, gambling, yeah. Smells like Teen Spirit. It's all about being young and re- reckless. Even like, you know, we're having a, it's a big week this week with obviously Oasis getting back together. You look at something like you know, cigarettes and alcohol, and you know, real mm-hmm. big rock and roll tunes that have that have graced the charts. They've always been tied in with youth culture. Yeah, of course. And that that is to me that's rock and roll. Yeah. And I think that's why they were so universally respected. Exactly. And yeah. to end it on this, as they always said when he opened up the show, we always when he finished the show, sorry, we are Motorhead and we play rock and roll. And that's it. Yeah. So we say that's Jeff Fair. We both, you know, it, it was an obvious choice. The first band I've gone to pick, uh, pick now, I've gone for the band Celtic Frost. Now, thinking about it, I probably could have gone for any of them so called. First wave black metal bands, you know, a lot, a lot of metalers and punks seem to agree that like Bathory, Venom, all that, all that group of bands were quite, in, you know, they were an inspiration. Um, the reason I've gone for Celtic Frost is Morbid, Morbid, uh, Morbid Tales just seems to be the album that everyone universally seems to really respect. But yeah. the first time I ever came um, aware of Celtic Frost, actually, it was. I made that joke, didn't I? That no one's no one's a punk when they're five or and all that yeah, shit. But you know yeah. what? Funnily enough, the first time I ever came aware of Celtic Frost was when I was twelve, and there is a reason for the for this story. So basically, when me and my mates were like twelve, thirteen, like the first year, we were big into buying manga VHSs. Okay. Remember manga? Yeah. When manga was like fucking really violent and edgy, you had stuff like fucking Ninja Scroll and Giver and Yoritsuka Doji and stuff. Well, in the UK, I'm not sure if it was the same in America, but. Whenever you bought a manga video and you put it in, it always had a trailer. At the, every single one of them had this trailer at the front where it was a load of different, a, a collage of all different mangas. Yeah. And the and I found out later that the song that was playing over that trailer was "The Heart Beneath" by okay. Celtic Frost. But it was su- it's such a good tune, and on on the trailer you hear that like that. Me and my mates. At that, even at that age, we used to put the play the tape to just that. to hear that song. Yeah. We loved it that much. It wasn't till years later, till I was probably about twenty years old, found out that song was by, by Celtic Frost. And a lot of my, a lot of the like hardcore mates I'd met at that time all seemed to be fans of Celtic Frost, particularly Morbid Tales. And um, that album is obviously amazing. It's really, really, yeah. you know, it's really like it's fucking great. Yeah, it's fucking great. You look at, for instance, if you want to see their influence, one of the best hardcore bands of all time, Sheer Terror. You know, just can't hate enough. It's just Celtic Frost, but with Paul Bearer singing yeah, instead of Tom Warrior. Literally is. Yeah. So there you go. But yeah, Celtic Frost. I think are my. You know, I, th- yeah. I think I'm safe in saying that both yeah. metalers and punks we, really we, like we Celtic like Frost. Them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so pick number two for me. This is probably another obvious one, and quite one that came to my head pretty quickly is Napalm Death. Mm. So Napalm Death formed in 1981, and they were. Uh, Anarcho punk band, very much in that same vein as Crass. You know, they, they first appeared on, I think it was the third Bullshit Detector compilation by Crass Records. And they've evolved, morphed, and obviously, you know, quite famously, no original members left in the band. But they've had a solid lineup since 92, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, and the sound obviously went into the, everyone knows, Scum, Enslavement, Bliss Racing, that fast grind core. Fucking, it's, it's so good, isn't it? And much like I suppose you said there, you could have picked some of those early, you know, other uh, like first wave of black metal bands. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's a lot of grindcore bands that probably would fit in this camp. But I think Napalm Death are the big one because they started as a punk band. Their the politics yeah. are so ingrained in that still yeah, that like yeah. anarcho, oh, very left, you know, animal rights, very big on 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 a lot of those big those subjects, mm-hmm. and still to this day. So that that's why I think they appeal to both because obviously the sound now. Is much more probably in the sort of metally death metal yeah. kind of sound, still mixed in with some grindcore and even probably some like you know, you know they're quite famously influenced by Swans as well, so some you know industrially post punk kind of mm. stuff, grinding sounds and all that. But yeah, Napalm Death, they're fucking amazing. I love them. Certain periods of them anyway. Are, not all of it is appealing to me, but I think hundred percent you can't argue. I think punks and metalheads. Yeah. We'll agree on 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 enjoying Napalm Death, even if it's 
different periods of their career. I was always more of a fan of their early nineties death metal. Exactly, period, See, yeah, that, yeah. that's kind of I kind of lost me a bit a lot of that nineties stuff, and yeah. they did even a couple of like groove metal things, which mm. I wasn't a fan of. Um, but they they kind of you know a few of the more later albums. Harmony Corruption and Utopia Banished was my favourite era. Okay, of, of, yeah, of, I mean um, mine is as cliched yeah. as it comes, but it is scum and enslavement yeah. to obliteration. But yeah. there is a few of their sort of later. It's good though that we can talk that about what is our favourite era because I'm going to ask you what your the next band I'm picking. I'm going to ask you what your favourite band is. So my next, sorry, I've jumped in, but I am taking over now. Um, my next pick is Slayer. Now surely. Everyone loves Slayer, who's into extreme music. If you're into extreme music, surely, surely you like Slayer. You might not like, but you know, it seems to be pretty universal that most punks and metalers agree that Slayer are a great band. Yeah, um, I love Slayer. Yeah. The fact right now, my, my story about Slayer was I saw Slayer 2002, Ozfest 2002, and on that on that outdoor stage before them, there was Cradle of Filth. <laughs> There was Drown and Pool, um, Lost Profits, and uh, who else was there? There was someone else massive. System of a Down. So you had them four bands, they all played before Slayer. Now you got to remember this is 2002, all four of them bands big, are massive at that time. Then. They are massive. Yeah. And we stood in that field while all them bands were playing. Every single one of them bands got at least a bottle thrown at some point. Some yeah. got more bottles than others. Yeah. But even System of a Downer at the time were fucking massive. Mm -hmm. Even they were getting bottles, right? Mm -hmm. Slayer came on, not a single thing was thrown. I should fucking hope so. Not a single thing was thrown. <laughs> but you've got to remember, Jeff, this was New Metal's height. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these are all New Metal bands playing. Yeah. But it just shows you, and there was everyone, there was there was there was punks in that crowd, there was metal heads, there was rockabilly types, there was all sorts. Everyone was fucking it was like they were just worshipping, you know what I mean? It was just admiring, and they were so tight, and I remember being blown away. They were probably the first band that really did blow me away live. Okay. I um, saw Slayer at a festival, funny enough. Not yeah. the same festival, it was at Leeds Festival, yeah. and they played at like four o'clock in the afternoon, Yeah. and it was still fucking amazing. They yeah, started yeah. pissing down while they were playing. Well, funny enough, they started pissing down when they so were playing when I watched them By the well. time they got to play Rain and Blood, it yeah, was... Yeah. Fucking raining, it yeah. was amazing. They, they were great, yeah. Fucking yeah. great band, like. But the most striking thing about that experience was I watched four bands who were in the metal world at that time would have been four of the biggest bands in the world. Yeah, yeah. And they all got bottled, and then Slayer came on, it's and nothing, nothing was can. thrown. The whole set, the whole 50 yeah. minutes to an hour they played, yeah. there was nothing thrown, nothing. And I just think that... the. the the respect that you know that they rightly deserve you know you know when you when you hear i mean i was talking about just before like celtic frost uh bathory venom and all them to to play music that's that evil you know what i mean i mean you listen to slay it's he you know the, the way he sings you know it's 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 like he's almost like an evil dictator do you know what i mean and yeah and it really adds something different to to what's come before and that, that's why they were more extreme i guess than anything that came about before and obviously they released that album undisputed attitude which is literally hardcore punk covers yeah yeah so that proves it you know yeah they loved it you know and punks punks love them yeah. metalheads love them i just think they're so rightly so universally respected what is your favorite slayer album i mean i'm gonna go cliche but i think rain and blood's the one i'd always go back yeah to. i mean a lot of people would say rain and blood and rain and blood's amazing but, but I, I would go I know where you're going i'm gonna go hello yeah, yeah which is great i was listening to it and the, the reason i like hello so much is it's got the odd slow tune, but the slow tune that's on it, At Dawn They Sleep, is an amazing song. Like, a few of the albums that came later, they went a bit slower, and yeah. I wasn't into it as much. I do like them fast. Yeah, fair But enough. I thought Hello Waits was the perfect mix of fast and slow without going too far either way. I think you could argue as well that a lot of that, uh, like, big four thrash bands... Yeah. Now, the, yeah, I agree with what you're saying. They all, not, all, not completely. Well, but... all of them do, but I'd say the one... That probably does most after work. It'd yeah. probably be Exodus. Okay. Um, I know Anthrax people like Anthrax. I wouldn't Amphrax, say definitely. yeah. Megadeth mainly. It's just we were yeah. most mostly metalers. Yeah, same. Everyone in their nan loves Metallica though. I'm not giving them the fucking. You know what I mean? <laughs> but like you go to the Metallica are like Slipknot. You go to the band. Yeah, you go to the gig. The whole family are there. The, the nans there. The mum and dad are there. The dogs there. The little kids there. The, 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 you know, everyone's got the. You know, they're one of them bands. I just think Slayer have got the, the respect yeah. of both both. Groups can't argue with that perfectly. All right, so yeah. my next pick, I've gone Discharge. So Discharge, it's 1977, formed in Stoke. 
obviously well known you don't know discharge out we've talked about them a lot love them fucking amazing one of the best bands of their sort of genre they spawned a whole genre that's influenced by a drum beat yeah and you know it goes from there but I, their sound that guitar sound is so fucking metallic isn't it sounding it, it Ah, oh, it's amazing, and I think because it, it, it was almost bordering like when like a lot of the seventy-seven punk, punks heard it, mm. I just don't think they got it because it was too noisy, yeah. chaotic, yeah, yeah. and clunky and machine. Uh, you know, yeah. it sounds like fucking. What? I don't know. Maybe tame nowadays, but when you put it into the context of what yeah, yeah. again, what had come before it, it fucking. You know, it was blowing the doors off, and like I say, you know, so many bands, even around their time, there's a lot of bands who kind of adopted that sound and moved in that direction. And then from there, you got your D-beat. And I think they're, I mean, obviously, famously, I'm going to give them props again, but Metallica covered some Discharge stuff. A lot of big, lot of big bands have but covered Discharge stuff. A lot of stuff, metal yeah. bands have covered Discharge, exactly. Mm. And they just fucking, they're amazing on it. And, 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 you know, even when you go into that, like, all the stuff that, like, D, you know, the D-beat stuff, a lot of those almost border on metal sound in any way, some of those D-beat albums and bands. Mm. And some of them, can, you know, if you go into, the, like, Swedish ones, some of them contain members from death metal bands, like, At The Gates and things like that. But... Yeah, I mean, again, universally, Discharge are pretty highly respected, mm -hmm. rightly fucking so, and, you know, a lot of punks and metalheads do seem to agree they are a great band, and if you're a metalhead and you haven't actually ever really given the time of day, maybe maybe go and try, because I, I can't see why it wouldn't appeal yeah, to someone the, like that. You've got extreme, the extremeness and, exactly. and stuff, and, the, and the, the loud sound. Loud, and yeah. it's almost atonal sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, but fucking yeah. class, Discharge. Um... I've, my next one may be a little bit like I don't know if there is they're as obvious as some bands but I've gone for the thrash band Onslaught and the reason I've gone for them I believe they're from Bristol um, particularly for their 1985 album Power From Hell which was uh, on, now they the, the had an album after that called The Legacy which is straight up thrash sounds like I don't know it sounds like fucking Testaments or something okay. but the album Power From Hell you can hear a massive UK 82 influence in it and I've seen footage from their old shows and it's just full of punks and metalers going, mm -hmm. going mad, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And fortunately I've never got to see them, even though, even though they have been around playing still, uh, something's always come up and I've never actually got to see Onslaught, but that album's fantastic. And like I say, you can hear, it's, it is thrashy, but you can hear a, you can, you can hear a UK2 and a Dischargey type of influence. Mm -hmm. And you can tell before they moved to the more thrash sound, they were heavily influenced by this UK82 sound. And it's very much, I don't want to say a crossover, but it's very, you can hear that influence <laughs> in there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's funny, actually, because um, Onslaught, along with Possessed, there's some conflict of who, which band came up with the term death metal. Okay. Because they had a, they've got a song on that album called Death Metal, but the mm -hmm. song was wrote in 1984. Ah. And if Possessed came up with, say, the, you know, people say Possessed came up with the term. It's kind of like a grey area, no yeah. one's quite sure who. Yeah. But yeah, Onslaught, I'm going to go for, uh, just for the album Power From Hell, which, you know, everyone seems to appreciate in both both camps. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right, my next pick. I've gone for Misfits. And again, I think universally, mm. you'll see metalheads with Misfits patches, you'll see punks with Misfits patches, obviously. And it's hard to, I think, like, because I don't know if it's because maybe the... 90s period of the misfits um definitely went a little bit more chunky metally sounding at times i don't know if it's that or the gothy horror kind of imagery which maybe ties into some metal bands as well i can't actually put my finger on exactly why they appeal to metalheads as well as punks but the weird thing about misfits in a way they win this whole list because they appeal to metalheads yeah they appeal to punks yeah they appeal to rockabillies yeah they appeal to goths yeah they, you know what I mean? Yeah, they yeah, seem yeah. to every. They are they, literally. They, they seem to tick I mean, every box. Putting aside the fact that they write, the, you know, especially that first blast of just yeah. fucking unbelievable songs. I don't know. I like I say I can't, I can't put my finger on it, but I, I universally, I, I would argue that they're they're loved by both camps, and mm. you know, well, like say I don't know, like when I heard like some of that like nineties, uh, you know, the Michael Graves era stuff. It, it definitely sounded more metallic than straight up punk to yeah. me, but I wouldn't call it metal either. I don't know, hard to explain. But like I say, for me, I can't put my finger exactly why, but they, you know, they do, mm. and they're universally loved, and they're a fucking brand now, aren't yeah, they? As well, yeah, yeah. like everybody knows the Crimson Ghost logo, mm. but they're still fucking great band, especially the Danzig era. So yeah, Misfits. Uh, my next pick is 
Black Sabbath, like, you know, black, what can be said about Black Sabbath? I could sit here and tell you the load for an hour, but I'll put yeah. that fucking band is. Yeah, so, but, but Black Sabbath to me, I don't, they're just one of them bands that everyone, like, similar to Motorhead, yeah. they, everyone just seems to universally yeah. respect Black Sabbath, yeah. rightly so. Um, I remember the first time I heard, uh, the first thing I heard, apart from Paranoid, was yeah. the first album, and, um, I remember, um, now, obviously I've said before, I'm a straight edge guy, but I remember the first time I ever heard the song Behind the Wall of Sleep. Wow. And I remember thinking, if I was ever going to get stoned, this would be the song I would pick to yeah. get stoned to. That's such a good song, and Ozzy's voice is so good and so haunting. Amazing. And that, uh, pff, if I had to... Make, uh, Black, if Black Sabbath had to have one criticism, and would be the same for Motorhead. I think they made too many albums. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They just they just made too much stuff. You got to pick what you know what. You, and most people would probably agree that early stuff, that yeah. Aussie stuff, especially the first three or four. Yeah. I mean, for me, I, the first four are fucking perfect. Yeah. For all of them, and even I like Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, and yeah. <coughs> well, Mas Masters of Reality as well. That That's was like my favorite. That was like the the one that seems to have like really inspired the doom metal movement. Oh yeah, one. yeah. You know well, what it mean? starts with someone ripping a bomb and coughing yeah, yeah. or a token, and it's so heavy you know for I mean? its time as well. Like, <laughs> down, down, down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just like. All right. Yeah, and yeah. It's but, yeah. Amazing. They're amazing. Yeah. Fucking amazing. Well, I think Doom you know what? There was a weird th there was a weird little period in Liverpool when 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 our when a lot of our venues closed down around two thousand and seven, you know, we lost well I've said it before, we lost yeah, Dress yeah, Lounge, yeah, Evan yeah, L, blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there seemed to be a little a, a little thing where a lot of the hardcore kids who had moved out of that were starting to get into Doom Metal yeah. loads. And a lot of Doom Metal bands started popping up in Liverpool as well. It seems to really hit a hot hot period in the like mid to late two thousands in Liverpool. And it seemed to be and you couldn't really help but like get kind of pushed in with it. And there was yeah. a lot of there was a lot of bands came through. And um I remember um I remember listening to a lot of the bands. I remember getting into the bands like Sleep. Mm. Obviously we we me went to see Weed Eater and we both agreed that, that was one of the best shows we it ever was saw. So good. Yeah, it was it? just it's so good. Yeah, I've seen so, so many I couldn't even list how many doom metal yeah. bands I went to see just because that was all that seemed to be coming through through uh, for for a good period of time. And all these were inspired by Black Sabbath, you can't deny yeah, well, it. Well that's it's funny. Yeah. That's ground. Do you know what I mean? Right? And yeah, stuff. and when you think about it, why why do you think punks love them so much too? Love Sabbath. Yeah. I'd, I'd actually I couldn't say for sure. Genesis the working class thing. I think yeah, it's it's very yeah, yeah. it's from that nor like that you know a steel yeah, steel yeah. mill town not Norman so to speak, um, but just like very industrial yeah. working class like you say, and you know what man, they just wrote fucking amazing songs, and yeah. it's it's the birth of heavy metal, isn't it as well? And I don't know, I mean. Well, you look at something like Led Zeppelin. I don't think they get. They're not. I don't think. I mean, I don't, I'm not a fan of Led Zeppelin. I feel like. I feel like Led Zeppelin, for instance, are a band that they, they didn't feel like they were with you. They didn't feel like they were. No, with well, you. they're the, the so-called dinosaur bands that yeah. punk came to kill. And the yeah, well, that's, yeah. It, you know what I mean? It felt like but Black Sabbath. Sabbath never really yeah, that. I felt like they were like again, like what I keep saying, they were representing you. You, yeah. That's kind of what I feel. No, yeah. And as I always say, I feel like that is rock and roll when they when it's tied in with youth culture. Not even youth culture, you know, just. Human culture, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. So yeah, on. one of the best ever. So my last pick, I've gone for Melvin's. Mm -hmm. So again, have I just ruined it with the Black Sabbath thing? Then why? It's just the same kind of band, isn't it? In a way. I mean, in a way, yeah. but I, I would think that obviously, yeah, Sabbath. That's doom metal. You know, Ground Zero. Yeah. That's where Melvin's were a bit more experimental. Like Melvin's are definitely yeah. more experimental yeah. band. I mean, they've got about fucking what 108 albums or something mm -hmm. stupid, like not quite that many, but a lot. Um, Early Doors, so they formed in 83, and I think in 84, Dale Kruber took over on drums, and that's Buzz and Dale have been consistent and right through the band, they've, they've changed bass players a lot, switched around, played with two drummers, etc, etc. Early Doors, though, they their first album, Gloomy Ports Treatments, Treatment, has definitely got some hardcore punk vibes oh, yeah. to it, and yeah, yeah. they were quite influenced by Side B of My War, mm -hmm. which is influenced by Black Sabbath, so there's your fucking degrees of separation right there, mm -hmm. but also Flipper, Oh yeah, uh, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, so yeah. slowing down their songs and playing big, yeah, big yeah. thingy chords. But all day and all night, I would sit and argue that they might be a sludgy band in sound or experimental. Well, no, he, he's a punk though. For yeah, me, fucking. Well, we've already said we said this as well. There's a few of them type of bands you could fill this list up with, like I Hate God and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. A lot of punks love all that stuff. Yeah, hundred percent. We love that I'm stuff. Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, Melvin's. I think just hundred percent. Like they they cross over. And I think that obviously because they came out of a lot of that. 
you know, and then the inspired grunge, etc., etc. Did an album or two with Jello Biafra, <laughs> fucking amazing as well. Zig Zig Howdy, I think it's called. One of them's called. It's amazing. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, as I say, if you want to dip in for the Melvins, you're in for a, a, a ride because they've got a lot. But uh, they're fucking the grace. When they are great, they are fucking great as well. So yeah. Uh, my last pick, maybe I'm stretching it a little bit, but I didn't want to make it too obvious a list. But I do believe this band is respected by both camps. I've gone for the death metal band Master okay. out of Chicago. Well, pre originally out of Chicago. I think mm -hmm. they're out of the Czech Republic now. Obviously, um, fronted by, well, it's his band, Paul Speckman, who seems to get a lot of universal respect, maybe. I mean, they started in 1983, and if you think what was coming out in, yeah. in you know, around 1983 in America, this band come along. I mean, they didn't release their first album until 1990, but they released a lot of demos and stuff before that. They were on the tape trading underground. Yeah, things, yeah. Right? And, you know, they, they are a very DIY, ethically DIY band. I think a lot of early thrash and death yeah. metal. Well, you know what? Is, um, like... <laughs> we joke that, you know, I get, like, brushed off by a lot of people. But, funnily enough, I saw Master and Paul Speckman, and I didn't even realise it, it was him at first. My mate said, it's fucking Paul Speckman. I, w I was looking at the merch desk and he actually came over and introduced himself to me. That's very cool. Very nice, very, very nice cool. guy. He's very, very small, cool. massive beard. Yeah. Um, but I was a big fan. I was a big, big fan um, of the first album and on the seventh day, go create master the second album. Maybe they get a little bit repetitive and generic as it goes on, but you got to remember this of the time this stuff came out. Um, but he came up to me and he was just like, oh, you know, telling me about their new records and that and, and, and all that. And I was... And it was him, and he'd come over, and he was speaking to a lot of people. You know, he was just a very, very nice, approachable fella. But yeah, they, they, people say death metal, but I listen to them albums. I'm not, I don't know. When I listen to death metal, it's, I don't know. It doesn't sound to me like fucking obituary. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? It doesn't sound like Deer Side. Maybe that is because, again, similar to Onslaught, there's a little bit of a UK 82 kind of influence there especially in that first album yeah. and I know he's in, he's inspired and a fan of all that stuff and it's definitely noticeable in that first album um, but yeah I think Master I think pretty much a lot of the older heads I speak to are fans of Master mm -hmm. you know the old punk heads yeah, and that yeah. um, Master Master Onslaught that kind of era of, of like Metal, you know, they all seem to love that stuff. A lot of the punk, old, older punks. So yeah, I've gone for them. Nice. So that's it. That's yeah. it. Top fives. I'm not, I haven't got. I'm, I'm not. I'm not doing them. Uh, no, it's too hard to think of. Yeah, it's an honourable yeah. mention, really. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's our list. So you know, score, like, subscribe. Add yours in the bottom if you yeah. think of any more. Throw them up. Yeah. Let's have a debate. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, score, like, subscribe, ring the bell uh, if you want some notifications. Instagram, Facebook, come give us a like, a follow, a message, comments, say hi. See you next time.